Perfect. All right, guys, I'm back with another episode and I'm not doing my usual, you know, YouTube video today. I'm doing something very interesting and I have a very special guest on today. He goes by the name of Exorad Magical on his social media, such as TikTok, um, Instagram, YouTube. You got any other social medias? Um, no, those are the main ones that I use. So, yeah, so I'll have all the links for that in my bio below. But the reason this guest is very fascinating, I discovered him on my For You page on TikTok and he has acquired 1.4 million followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. 1.4. And the reason he's acquired all those followers is for a very good reason. His content is very unique. And what makes him very unique is he had schizophrenia for a decent amount of years. And he uses his artistic talents, such as drawing and also uh, you, you do animation, right? Mm -hmm. He animates his drawings to show people what it's like to have schizophrenia or what we medically call schizophrenia on a day-to-day -day basis. So anyway, I want to introduce my guest, Christopher, or Exorad Magical. Go ahead. Mike is yours. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so my name is Christopher Gilbert Grant, but I go by the artist's name Exorad Magical. Um, I'm a 25-year-old artist from Northeastern Canada, and I grew up in Abano First Nation, which is a First Nation reservation, um, and it's home of the Mi'kmaq people. So I'm a Mi'kmaq person. And um, growing up has been very interesting for me because I haven't come from the traditional Western perception of life when it comes to like things like life or death or the idea of entities or spirits or things. So right from like a very early age, this was all just like casual, if that makes sense. Um, and what I do is I'm an artist, I'm a filmmaker, an animator and a musician. And I'm trying to get this vision that I had many years ago, kind of like, I'm, tr I'm trying to like get it out in the world because I feel like it can help a lot of people who suffer from what is medically considered schizophrenia. Because from my own experience, compared to how I've been treated in hospitals and how people out in like, I, I joke about it, like no hate to anybody, but out in the suburbs and stuff, like the way that they treat you is way different than where I'm from. And so I find it very important to communicate the everyday experiential part of schizophrenia rather than what you read in the DSM-5 or how people want to tell you what it is. Because we are still people, we are still human beings who have to navigate life with this perceptual phenomenon. So uh, I try my best to kind of like show people that you can actually go your own way and still not be a harm or a threat to society or yourself i'm trying to break that so that's who i am yeah that's awesome um let the people know what you've been medically diagnosed with for the past uh, couple years so they know okay. so they know you a little bit more so in 2017 uh and around october i was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder which is schizophrenia and bipolar mixed into one condition and so I have the hallucinations and what they call delusions of schizophrenia mixed with bipolar manic episodes. And so um, it's a very, very, the best way to explain it is it's like a rock and roll and psychedelic adventure every day. Um, but I try my best to live with it and not kind of like give in to the, the weirdness of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I only say that because I wasn't schizophrenic growing up. So I do remember what life was like before it all changed. So yeah, that's my diagnosis. It's very interesting. Where do you think your um, hallucinations and the sounds that you hear, where do you think that all started? Well, um, before my diagnosis in 2016, I was in university and I was actually kind of just like taking art school stuff. And I was very happy-go-lucky and pretty like what you would call normal, I guess, a little goofy. And it started very subtle. It was like all of a sudden, I would wake up with what I call the eeriness, which is where I would just get moments of derealization or depersonalization. And I'd go, I feel like I'm a camera observing life and I don't feel like I'm a part of it. Uh, so, it sorry, got, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to stop this real quick. Uh, let the people know what derealization is and depersonalization is in like simple terms, because some people have no idea what that is. I've even talked to oh. a lot of friends who have it and they had no idea that this feeling has a name because I've experienced this on a very strong level myself um, going back a few years. So I'll explain my definition and then you can explain yours. Uh, sure. So my, my definition of derealization, depersonalization 
It's like you're living in a glass bubble in a dream and everything around you is very dreamlike, right? Sounds familiar. So um, this can start for all kinds of reasons. Uh, how it started for me is I, I never took any substances, nothing like that. I just started questioning things. And um, when your reality shatters your whole worldview, uh, it can cause a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. And so your body puts you in the state of derealization and depersonalization where you feel like everything is fake to kind of protect you from a lot of stress. Because obviously when you stress out, uh, you can develop sicknesses, right? Because stress leads yeah. to anxiety. Anxiety leads to, it leads to the physical, right? Your, your mental state is very important because it can lead to physical problems like sicknesses. And so what your body does is it turns off all your emotions. You don't feel depressed. You don't feel happy. You don't feel anything besides maybe dopamine from doing pleasurable things, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, tell me if I'm wrong on that. You're not wrong at all. You actually described it pretty to the T. Um, how I've always described it is, it's very similar to your bubble thing you were talking about, but how I described it to my family over the years, because they were trying to understand. I said, it feels like this, the ego of Christopher is trapped behind glass or prison bars. And I want to feel more than just pleasure seeking. I want to feel every like cup of tea, everything that's like alive. And I, I can't because I've been, for me, it was trauma that unlocked all of this for me. It was intense trauma from childhood and from uh, teenage years. And it caused a schism in me. So for me, it felt like I was banging up against the glass going, I'm still Christopher, but I, I'd be sitting places with my family and they'd be like, are you okay? And I'm just staring at a wall. Yeah. And I feel like I am the wall or I don't see the difference between me or the spider in the corner. Like it's, it's, it's depersonalization, but it's not a disconnection. It's only a disconnection from your ego. But for me, it was like, I became existence itself. Like I was aware of like, I guess the schizophrenia is bleeding into this, but it's it that was my personal experience is like i just don't feel like a persona i feel like i'm just a camera i'm observing life and people are going by and people are smiling and laughing and joking and watching movies at the theater and i'm sitting here going what do you guys not see what's happening like or a movie, right yeah so the best way to explain it is i felt like i was reading my own novel and i was observing myself from outside mm -hmm. so that's how i would explain it like for yeah yeah for me it was kind of similar and also um the one thing uh that was really weird for me is how incredibly fast time started to go by so the way i discovered what derealization and depersonalization was i think it was back in 2019 or 2020 somewhere in april about two two three maybe maybe three years ago but basically when it started i realized that time was going by extremely fast and one night i just decided to wake up and go on google i couldn't sleep i was just staring at the ceiling and i looked up why does my life feel like a dream and then boom, derealization popped up, depersonalization. I'm reading all the symptoms. And I know people say, oh, you can't diagnose yourself, but who knows you better than you, right? So yeah. as I'm, you know, reading the symptoms, I'm like, wow, this is me. You know, all my emotions feel turned off. I, I can't feel depression. I don't feel sadness. Um, I don't feel any, any really emotion. It's like I feel completely numb. It's like TV static. And yeah. it, everything feels extremely dreamlike. Time is either going by extremely fast. For, for other people, it goes by really slow, depending on the person. For me, it was extremely fast even now that's the one thing that stuck with me like i've gotten a lot better with derealization depersonalization but time is just insanely fast and another thing i noticed it's kind of like being in the truman show you begin to notice yeah. weird patterns you know what i mean i don't know if you've ever I, I think i talked to you in the dms on instagram about a retro causality right where you yeah. think of something or there's something called deja rev which is you dream something and then it pops up in real life right so oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a few examples uh, do you know what the mandela effect is Oh, absolutely. All right. So um, my mom sent me to Trader Joe's to buy a bottle of white wine. And as I get to Trader Joe's, I'm walking you know, on, on the parking lot towards the store. And I have random thoughts of the Mandela effect pop into my head because I haven't made a video on it. And I'm just thinking about the Mandela effect. It randomly popped into my head. And as I walk into the store uh, to, you know, to buy some wine, the first wine bottle I see is called Mandela wine. And what's funny is... <laughs> Yeah, this is weird, right? What's funny is yeah. like, uh, I've never seen this wine brand before and I, and I do love wine, which is really weird. I've never ever seen this wine before. And apparently it's also named after Nelson Mandela, just like the Mandela effects named after him. So right. that's like one example. Or another example is um, I was doing cardio at Gold's Gym on like the stairs 
And I was listening to a song called Red Pill. It was a rap. Uh, I forgot the artist, but it basically wrapped about, you know, the blue pill, red pill concept, inconvenient, truth, convenient. And as I'm doing, um, you know, as I'm working out, listening to the song, I'm also thinking, and this happened last year, I was also thinking about my next video, which was five life lessons I learned from the matrix. And I'm just thinking about this while listening to the song, right? And I look on the t television right in front of me and a Tylenol commercial pops up and it just shows a blue and a red pill. And at the end of the commercial, it says, stop and think. And I'm just like looking at it like, I got weird, like, uh, not, not, uh, I got weird synchronicity feelings from it. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Trust your gut on that, by the way. Like, that's my advice for navigating this matrix. Trust it's, your gut. It's legit like a, like a planned movie. I'm like, okay, it's like I'm anticipating things happening, or like I, I, I think about a random, like this one time a random hike popped into my mind that I've never been to before. The next day, my friend hits me up, hey, let's go hike at this place that I was just thinking about where I've never been to. So there's weird yeah. situations like that. It also, um, some people say that proves that time is not as linear as we think and that it's a loop. You know, the future affects the past. And a lot of these, and it's not like I'm special or something. I think a lot of people experience this. They just, they just don't think about it as much as me and other people. They don't notice it. They don't notice but it, right? But it's happening to everybody. But once you start paying attention, you're like, okay, this is kind of weird. This is happening very often. Maybe it's been happening and I just started paying attention. That's my kind of theory on it. But uh, I don't know. I think it's very interesting and fascinating because it does feel like the Truman Show. You know, like in the movie, the dude just starts noticing patterns. He's like, okay, something's weird about life right now. And by the way, every movie that's made has to come from an experience or phenomenon that other people feel. Otherwise, it wouldn't sell. Exactly. Seriously, the way that the collective unconscious works is that something only works if a bunch of people can relate to it. Even an idea that's interesting and it's like, you know what, I never thought about that before, has existed before it was made into a film. Yeah. And for that to even be an inspiration to get funding, to get people behind it and wanting to support it. And that's kind of in my own theory of the imagination has everything before we manifest it here or create. Oh, 100%. So, but what I wanted to uh, say about um, that Truman Show effect, um, gosh, what was I going to say? There's something really interesting about synchronicity because I was an atheist in high school. I was an atheist because I was afraid. And I used to say that when I was in high school, I was self-aware enough to go, look, I don't believe in spirits or God or this or that because I'm scared to find out. And because I said that people were just like looking at me and they were just like, oh, you're not crazy. You're, you know, you, you believe in science and that's good. Um, but what ended up happening was a couple years later, um, cause I've been drawing my whole life. I looked at drawings from high school and to those of you that don't know watching this, I have two main hallucinations. One is Chester and one is Bertram. And I've identified them and named them because one represents like a silly Jester energy that's like all happy. And the other represents like a decaying, like dark Jester energy. And so Bertram was always around when there was trauma around, but I didn't notice because I was blocking that from my experience because I was afraid. And so when I went back and looked at high school sketchbooks, I was drawing Bertram and I didn't realize at the time I was drawing what I would later see in my life. Wow. And I find that really strange because I remember I looked back and I was like, I wasn't even thinking about schizophrenia or anything in high school. I was just concerned about girls and stuff like, I, you know, and so synchronicity, I think, is something that you have to start paying attention to in order to catch it. And it gets stronger and stronger the more that you accept it happening. Um, because I find that like life is just deja vu for everybody. So, yeah, I mean, my own mom talks to me about it all the time. She's like, I keep things keep happening to me that I keep thinking about or dreaming about and I'm only noticing it now and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a mystery. I mean, that's the thing about atheism. You know, everyone thinks it's all about logic and science, but a lot of it is also uh, faith based, but they just will never admit it. You know, like in college, they tell you you can't talk about your beliefs or religion or teach it. But for some reason, they're teaching their belief. Right. Like there's a common yeah. um, belief in the medical uh, in industry that schizophrenia is simply a chemical imbalance in the brain, which is just a theory. It hasn't been observably proven. And there's a guy, and I mentioned this guy before to you in one of my videos. His name is Jerry Marzinski. He also was an atheist, and he is a psychotherapist for, for 35 years. He's dealt with schizophrenic patients, with 
patients who have bipolar. And he changed his mind when one patient actually walked into his office without a, um, without an appointment. And the, the, the patient said, you know, the voices want to talk to you. And uh, Jerry Marzinski said, okay, what do they want to tell me? And they straight up said, you have no right to interfere with our way of life. And after that, Jerry Marzinski changed his view on it. He's like, okay, there's something more going on than just chemical imbalance, you know? But what do you think yeah. about that? Um, well, I have this thing that I always say to people who try, because, okay, when you talk about schizophrenia online, you get attacked. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's one of those things where people, I don't know if it's their own fear of people being out of control, which makes sense. I get it from a survival point of view. The amygdala is like, well, typically I've seen people with schizophrenia get violent, but the problem is they leave it right there. They don't question, okay, why did that person start acting out? Why did they start saying, you're not listening to the signs? There's something bigger going on. Um, with the chemical imbalance thing, I've actually had my brain tested when I was in the psychiatric unit once. And um, they were trying to tell me that it was all chemistry and that I'm still Christopher. And it was this weird, like, I remember at the time, the voices being like, look how condescending they are to you. And it was the voices saying that. And I was like, yeah, because I still know who I am. It's just I'm hearing voices, so I don't see what the problem is. And that attitude has gotten me in a lot of trouble with certain doctors because yeah. they think I'm being defiant. They think that I'm purposely trying to mess something up, but I'm not. I've always been a person that kind of protects my freedom or freedom in the sense of like my ability to be a part of the world and to express myself. Yeah. Um, with brain chemistry, though, I digress with all that, but with brain chemistry, you know, even if it is brain chemistry, what is the essence or the life force behind the brain chemistry exactly. that's driving it and making those chemicals dance? Because it can't just start moving, Random. you know, like yeah. there, there's something about it that's like people just want to say, oh, it's chemicals. But they're saying that without the knowledge of what chemicals are. And they're saying it with an extreme faith in science and logic. And they're, they're, it's like they're afraid to question it. Um, I've gotten in many fights with people about that where I said, well, you realize that if you hold on to just science and logic alone, there's nothing wrong with science and logic. But when you hold on to that, like that's the be all end all, you're missing a whole sphere of information and saying that it's useless. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you actually create more hell for yourself because when something illogical happens, what do you do? right? Because the world's going to be the world no matter what. So I find all these people who are obsessed with logic and science, they're afraid of wiggliness in life. They want yeah. to keep grab a hold of matter and nature, but you can't do that. It's literally like you can try, yep. but you will destroy yourself. Because it's, it's, uh, it's basically cognitive dissonance. You know, when you introduce a fact to a person's belief in many of these atheists who claim to be all about logic and science, they tend to sweep things that are metaphysical, right? They're like, if we can't explain it, uh, let's make something up. Let's make up a theory, right? And just let's put fact in front of the theory and make it sound smart, like chemical imbalance, even though it has not been proven, has not been officially tested. And um, I find that very interesting. And I think, uh, you know, in the medical industry, I feel like they treat schizophrenics with a lot of disrespect. They don't, they kind of regard, regard them as like not even human sometimes from what I'm seeing and from what I'm reading. And I feel like if they understood the spiritual aspect more, I think they would make a lot more progress to um, getting through the, through schizophrenics and figure out, you know, what their problem is and how to deal with it with, you know, more love, more grace, more respect. Because there, there's well, a... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, here's a hot take that a lot of people don't like hearing. Um, a lot of people treat schizophrenic people, not just scientists, but society as a whole, as if mm -hmm. we're not human. And I can say that from personal experience because I can't seem to shut my mouth when I'm in public. Like I will talk about the voices and stuff like that. And I get like the weirdest reactions from people. And even with what I'm doing on TikTok, I get like paragraphs of hate from people telling me that I'm not in control. I don't know what I'm doing. It's dangerous. What happens if you get violent? And it's the most condescending thing ever because at the center of schizophrenia, um, there still is a self. The self is, it might be what they call a schism, mm -hmm. like, but all that means is split mind because schizophrenia means split. 
mind, schizophrenia. And that doesn't mean split like the movie Split or DID, Dissociative yeah. Identity. It means that the conscious mind and the subconscious are separate, but they're also connected at the same time in a way that I guess logical people would consider it broken because it's not doing the neurotypical thing. But I actually see it as it's opening different windows of perception. And so I find even the language itself is like trying to put you down, like you have a shattered brain, you're broken. You're... And it's always because they see schizophrenia, especially in the West, as useless to the means of production. Because how are you going to tell me to go in to work nine to five all the time and like try to build a like a career or in America they have 401k or whatever. Yeah. Because a schizophrenic person is living half in a dream world and half in this world. Always, constantly. And the very the um the variance of degrees of I guess intensity for schizophrenia is all based upon self stigmatic self stigmatizing as well as how the outside world expects and treats you. Yeah. Um and uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say, just because it's on my mind, like, I don't mean to digress. Oh, go, go, so dude, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, even my talking patterns are so... Uh, 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 but, hey, I'm, in, um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying every bit of this, whether anybody hey. else enjoys it. I like it. So you go ahead. This is fascinating. All right. I appreciate that. I'm so used to people going, what? What are you... Um, so, me, so basically, I. <laughs> yeah, basically, um, what I think is really interesting is that, you know, it's an important question to ask well, why are some schizophrenic people murderers? Why do they commit these crimes that are so horrific and blah, blah, blah? And I feel like that's the stupidest question because if you treat people like an animal or like cattle and move them from hospital to hospital to hospital, What's gonna happen? it doesn't matter if you're schizophrenic or ADHD or whatever, it's designed to make you go nuts. And whether that's on purpose or not, I can't say, but the system's broken, man, for mental health. Like, of course. I believe in mental health care. I don't believe in calling people with neurodivergent brains all ill. I think that there's something sick about going, well, you're schizophrenic, so you're ill. Yeah. Um, I've been ill. I know the signs that lead to me being ill, but that's my responsibility. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be, you know what I mean? Like, if mm -hmm. I mess up, I mess up. But there's something condescending about that whole thing. And the reason why, and people don't want to hear this, I notice, the reason why maybe someone's brother killed their ex-girlfriend or whatever, blah, 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 is because that person never got a chance to be who they are. And anybody who's angry and repressing their actual expression tends to get angry. And when you're angry, you get hateful. When you're hateful, you go bananas. Yeah. When you go bananas, you hurt people around you who, especially with schizophrenia, you think are trying to hold you down and i know this because i've had family members who stigmatize me and i didn't get like violent or anything but i could feel that pressure from the voices and from the hallucinations being like they're against you don't go near them they don't care about you blah blah blah, blah. and then people will say no no i care about you but when you're schizophrenic it's like i look at their face and i see the insincerity it's like so clear. It's like a, a liquid that's moving. It's so hard to explain the yeah, language. Yeah. But they're like they're treating you like you're just super ill. And even though they're saying, you know, I want to help you, I care about you, they're, yeah. they're, there's a disconnect and they don't fully understand you. And because of that disconnect, it led me to want to self-medicate many times in my life with drinking or smoking weed. And that made it a lot worse. But I realized I was only doing that because I felt like I wasn't being hurt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all want to be hurt. Absolutely. But it sucks whenever you're trying to be heard and everybody is just labeling you with what has been deemed forever as this is schizophrenic. You are illogical and stupid and unable to do anything. And I just wasn't having that. I was like, well, I wasn't schizophrenic when I was younger. Um, I remember what it's like to be treated like, hello, how are you? Welcome to the coffee shop, blah, blah, blah. And then now people in my town, they know that I have schizophrenia and some people stare at me like I'm a freak, but it's, it's something that I'm so used to at this point that like, I can't really beat myself up over it. And the hardest part about it is that I'm naturally compassionate. So even when people are freaked out by me, I'm like, oh man, I, I don't want to do that to you. I just want you to understand where I'm coming from. 
Like, I'm not going to peel your skin off and wear it. Like, that's all media and film only hyper-focusing on the worst that can happen. To me, it's no different than if, like, you know, I went on TikTok and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm gay. And then everybody goes, okay, so you're trying to turn my children gay. What is wrong with you? You're sick. And that used to be a way that people thought before. Same thing with people of color. I mean, like, if you expressed anything that wasn't traditional, you were seen as a, an enemy or a demon. Yeah. And so I find that's no different with schizophrenia because I know many people with schizophrenia who have kids, who have jobs, who are actually like lawyers and nurses. Living like, normal lives, right? Living a relatively normal life. It's not like the they movies just, where they freak out. No, <laughs> it's so stupid. It's causing a lot of damage. Um, My philosophy is when, when I talk to new people of new like beliefs or faith, um, th there's a verse in the Bible that I think is very universal. And it says that if you answer a matter before you hear it, it's foolish and shameful. So, yeah. and what's interesting is a lot of Christians, you know, within my community, they literally answer matters before even hearing it out. They like, they will, like, let's say I present something in the scriptures that's not talked about in church a lot. And I present like a new issue or topic because it's foreign, not because I'm wrong or it doesn't, it's, it doesn't say it in the scriptures because it's foreign. They say, oh, you're wrong. You're stupid. Only because I presented something that's just brand new, right? Because people want to be um, in their little reality bubble. Anything outside of it, whether it's true or not, they just reject it, right? The truth doesn't matter anymore. And that's why when I approach people, whether I agree with them or not, I have a lot of friends with different beliefs and atheists. I have friends who believe in astrology, you know, the, even things I don't agree with, but I will fully always hear them out. I will never just say you're wrong because I disagree with you, which is why if you look at some of my content, it's all kinds of stuff. It doesn't mean I believe every single thing I post. It just means yeah. I'm open to it regardless. And my philosophy when approaching to, um, any topic is the whole Jesus philosophy where he tells people, uh, you have to become like a child to you know enter into heaven. And that, that's also can be applied universally. Like you have to be a clean slate to understand anything. I mean, what is a child, right? A child is born with no preconceived ideas, right? It's simply they're ready to learn and observe and um, take in information, right? So anytime I come into a new topic, such as schizophrenia, I take all my preconceived preconceived ideas out, right? About what the media taught me, what movies taught me, and I'm, you know, and I hear people out, which is why I'm really glad that I'm following you because I learned a lot from you concerning schizophrenia. And oh, it yeah. got me to it got me to understand people like you better. And I feel like you're helping other schizophrenics and other people whose family members are schizophrenics or friends to understand them better, and that it's not at all what the media portrays it as, right? So I think humility and also People need to turn down their pride to understand others. So like I said, even though I don't agree with everybody I meet or friends and family, doesn't mean I'll never hear them out. I'll shut up and hear them out fully before I you know, mm -hmm. tell them my point of view. But I think, and what really frustrates me is people go against their own belief, right? Like for example, Christians, even though this, you know, that verse I just told you is in the Bible, they literally go against that and they answer matters already. If something sounds weird or crazy, they already answer. And I'm like, why are you going against your own belief? Like, that's kind of weird mm -hmm. to me. But yeah. See, I've always had problems with um, like organizations. I think that like, and I'm not trying to step on your toes or anything. Oh, I you respect go ahead, your. Go ahead. I respect your beliefs. Um, but what I'm saying is that, from my point of view, if whether you're like Christian or whatever, you know, you're still kind of following the same spirit path that other beliefs are following, just in a different lens that suits your existence or who you are or mm -hmm. what you believe in. And that's why it's important to have beliefs because my belief is that everything is God. Like I wouldn't call it like the man upstairs from my point of view, but that's because I grew up indigenous to us. We call it creator and everything comes from creator. Other people call it the source. Other people call it whatever yeah, your environment but, raises you. It's true. Yeah. But no matter what you call it, whether you call it Jesus or Vrishna or whatever, it's creator. It doesn't matter. It's like people get so hung up on, and I don't say this disrespectfully, but people get hung up on almost the mascot that's wearing the face of eternity. And they get so obsessed with like the, it's, it's almost like they're, they're, they're a symbol and they get hung up on it in a physical way. Like, Oh, like the, you know, the man, the myth, the legend, this it's all. But to me, I feel like we're all, like Jesus in a way we, it's up to us to have a Christ-like consciousness in order to heal the world 
So I have major respect for Christianity. Just I have a problem personally with the organizations that try to use it to hurt or divide or cause like a stir. I'm sure you agree with that too. Oh, like 100%. there's there's, pe there's people out there who use the name of God to start war, to yes. separate, to and I think that's ugly. Mm -hmm. Um so to me like the concept of God is a very universal thing. It just has different names. And I'm not trying to take the piss out of it either. I'm just saying that perception is weird, you know? Like we all have different ways of seeing it. Because if you ask me, like what I pray to are the faces, the voices, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's probably what a Christian person would call angels, right? Because angels, I get demons. angels, demons, you know? And to me, it's not about the terms you use. It's about the energy you're trying to convey. You're trying to comprehend a communication there. So I find like language is a prison and it gets you stuck in these ruts of, mm. okay, so then I have to do this, 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 this. and then, you know, it kind of has a, you have a hard time with the natural contradictions of life because, you know, I don't know. I'm just going off. No, but... no worries, man. Go ahead. <laughs> I love these conversations. That, that's the thing about me is um, I, as you can tell from a lot of my videos, I entertain every theory, every idea and every faith. I've entertained atheism. I've entertained, um, the idea that we are all God. I've entertained the uh, idea of, you know, Christianity, that there's a God and there's a guy named Jesus and the history mm -hmm. of the Bible. I entertain all these ideas and I'm open to strictly the truth. So what I like to do, as I told you, is I, um, I throw away my preconceived ideas and I hear people out. So when you say that you're stepping on my toes, you're really not because I'm open to oh. the truth in general. You know, I don't understand people who just get offended right away. If you're offended, that, mm -hmm. that means something there's something about your belief that you don't want to be a lie, right? You want to hold on to that illusion. So for me, I am open to the truth. That's why I'm entertaining everything. And uh, I, I kind of want to talk about the gestures, if you don't mind, unless you want to say something more. Uh, I just wanted to say the correlation between why people with schizophrenia say that they're Jesus or they're God. Um, I made a video about it on YouTube. I don't know if you saw it, but basically um i have this theory and it's from my own experiences because i've had freakouts right mm -hmm. where i was like i am god but it was like out of misunderstandings of certain things um because there was a time where i entertained um like the bible right like i started to really heavily entertain that idea but it wasn't something that was from my i guess the source of where i'm from because i'm indigenous yeah but I was entertaining it because I saw the parallels in a spiritual way to what they were trying to say in the Bible. I don't write it off as wrong. I write it. I don't write it off as anything. It's just someone had a perception that like, to me, it's no different than when you have a vision and you start expressing it. And I see truth as something that is subjective and happens to the person in the moment. And if many people can relate to it, that's their path. And, but it can always switch because there's no one way to exist or grow or create. Um, why people with schizophrenia always say that they're Jesus or they're God is because when you have schizophrenia and the mind splits and your ego dies, it's no different than an acid trip or a mushroom trip mm -hmm. where you start feeling like you're everything and everyone. And so when you have that feeling, a lot of people try to get as close as possible to a stability or to a goodness because it's easy to fall into the spiritual rabbit hole, especially with ego death, where it feels like you're being tormented by demons. That's why a lot of people are afraid of it because you really open up that energy or, or I like to call it the portal to the dark world because when you have ego death, whether it's through schizophrenia or through psychoactive substance, it opens you up to everything. So all your traumas, all your pain, all your fears, but also all your hopes, all your dreams and all your, so you'll often get people with schizophrenia who say I'm Jesus because they're trying to hold on to something that makes them feel in control and good. Mm -hmm. And they want to help everyone just like someone on mushrooms does when they're at the peak of their trip. You just want everyone to get along and, you know, like have fun and stuff. But also there are people who trip and they say, I'm Satan. I'm the devil, I'm evil. And that happens with schizophrenic people too. And I think what it is, is there's people with schizophrenia out there who don't actually work on themselves. Like, I'm not trying to be a, like a jerk or anything, but you know, just cause you have schizophrenia, it doesn't mean that everybody's like me. 
mm -hmm. or like the people that I talk to who are more balanced and stuff. It's very different. I've met people with schizophrenia who are so catatonic, you can't have a conversation with them. But oh. that doesn't make my experience or theirs any less or more of what it is. It's just that some people, you know how some people have a bad heart or a bad soul? Like they're just, they're ready to be hateful. And yeah, they, they just don't take responsibility for their actions. So whether you have schizophrenia or not, like everybody needs to. Schizophrenia, account. depression, autism, all of it doesn't matter. If the base level is, eh, the schizophrenia is going to amplify that. It's not yeah. about the schizophrenia, it's the individual. So it's yeah. kind of like having, um, gaining a lot of money out of nowhere, right? It's not going to change you. It's just going to amplify who you are already. So if you're a generous person, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be more generous like that Mr. Beast guy right on YouTube. And if yeah. you're a selfish person, you're going to be extra greedy, extra selfish. So that's what I see. But um, uh, if you don't mind, would you like to talk about the jesters and then the, the entities? Yeah, sure. All right. So the one thing I notice about jesters uh, in general is how a lot of people on psychedelics see the exact same type of entity and a lot of, you know, atheists and people who want to be logical kind of dismiss it. Like, oh, this is a chemical imbalance. I'm like, how does a chemical imbalance produce the same effect, right? The same hallucination for everybody, the same looking entities. It's like you take a quarter and you flip it 10,000 times and it lands on heads every time. That's almost impossible, right? There's got to be another yeah. factor. Maybe this quarter is loaded. Maybe one side is heavier and that's why it keeps on falling on heads. Same goes for this. Maybe there's something more to it. Well, you know, a lot of the people who criticize it are people who have never done anything. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they wouldn't even go near it or have a psychedelic experience. Or at least talk to people or research it, you know? No, because they've written it off already as it's nuts. Like what? I'm living in this world. What? I can't see it in front of my face so it must right not now. Be real. So it's not real. You guys are all stupid. And the thing that's so fascinating about that is I get that point of view. I understand being in a logical headspace and going, I don't want to entertain that. But the thing that's unfortunate is it's happening anyway. Like whether you want to believe it or not, millions of people are experiencing this. And it's not a conspiracy around all schizophrenic people trying to make you all like, no, it's really something that happens. And especially when you're schizophrenic, it happens almost every day that kind of experience um i was gonna say like with the jester entities um some people i think are really afraid to deal with something because when you're like oh it's just a chemical imbalance here's the problem the chemical imbalance is it has long ears and a face similar to a human or at least the symmetry of it and it sticks its tongue out at you and it goes ha ha look at you and it's so disembodied from you, your ego, even yourself at your most smallest point of consciousness on a psychedelic trip. Doesn't matter. It's so clear to you in that moment. Observer, jester. And there's nothing you can do about it when you're seeing it. It's like its own conscious being. Is that how you experience it? Like it's not like yes. a reflection of your emotion, but what you experience is like it's its own conscious being that appears to have its own agenda. Is that what it kind of feels like? Yes, but it's only agenda. I think people want to like kind of dive into that and they think that there's a big plan. But what people need to understand about the jester is the jester just is like it's a reflection of basically everything because a jester can be anything. It mm -hmm. can be anyone. It can be any situation. It can be like literally the jester is the perfect entity and symbol for existence itself because the jester is a push and pull between dark and light constantly with this attitude of absurdity towards the individual so it's like oh you're afraid to lose your job well here your job everything is on fire but guess what it doesn't matter because you don't die and life is eternal and so the jester presents you with things that can scare you from a mortal like like a, a conscious or ego point of view because you realize you really can't hold on to anything but the jester in a weird way is also trying to guide you to be similar to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like the jester is very much an entity that's like, you are me, I am you. Enjoy your life, do what you need to do. But remember, if you're an asshole, there's consequences. And remember, if you're too good, there's consequences. You have to balance it. And it's so fascinating because the jester, like you sit with it for a little bit or you see it or you feel it it doesn't matter it comes to you any way that it can like 
on a psychedelic trip, you're going to see the full friggin' thing, like trying to communicate to you. But after the trip, just like synchronicity, you notice when the gestures are around, mm-hmm. especially with things like schizophrenia, because I can't turn that half thing off. So, you know, um, I find it really funny that people have stories about gesture flipping them off Enjoying. or like <laughs> or like dancing on like visions of things they love and stuff like it will use anything to remind you that you ain't shit, but also you are the shit. It's like a walking co- like contradiction. Um, I think people that are too prideful get the terrifying visions and people who have a good heart, they get a terrifying vision, but they don't take it as like a, like a threat Mm -hmm. because if you know that your ego is something that exists now and can change to anything, the threat isn't scary anymore. It's just, this is life moving. Like it's just how it is. Yeah. So this, this, um, jester joker type entity uh, people have seen it on psychedelics. Schizophrenics have seen it. Um, people uh, have seen it in dreams as well. And uh, what I find extremely interesting is the theories for what exactly they are. And I want to I want to mention some of these theories. I think the the one okay. of the theories I've heard is that it's just a reflection of you and your emotions, right? That's a common one. Uh, another theory I heard is uh, it's like the Book of Enoch theory. I don't know if you heard of this one, the the Nephilim theory. That um, uh, in the Book of Enoch it says, do, do you know what the Book of Enoch is? No. Okay, so it's apparently one of the books that was removed from the Bible, and Enoch was a was a, apparently a prophet in the biblical stories. And this book, he talks about uh, the the giants of the ancient days, and uh, in in the, in the story, uh, angels from heaven apparently, you know, the fallen angels, you know, how the whole basic, they fell from heaven, that whole story, and they apparently mated with humans, and they created these hybrids, these giants. And throughout the world, we hear of mythologies about giants, right, everywhere. And uh, according to Enoch, these are disembodied spirits of the Nephilim that you can contact through using the roots of plants, which the fallen angels taught men about, such as, um, you know, like ayahuasca, DMT, stuff like that. And that's another one of the theories is that these jester entities, these trickster spirits, and the reason why a lot of people see uh, also like a clown-like appearance, right? Like a, a white face, sometimes they see red hair, you know, that like kind of um, clown from it. And uh, they say that that's because these are the disembodied spirits of Nephilim. I mean, if you kind of think about like a clown, it has like big feet, right? Kind of like elongated skull, like like the uh, it character has red hair. And according to many natives, I don't know if uh, your people talked about this as well, but natives in America, they talk about stories that were passed down through oral traditions of these giant red haired pale faced um, giants, these hybrids that would kill people, eat people. And the, the, these tribes would war with them. I think they're called the, the Sitika. And according to Enoch, when these giants passed away, their spirits still remained in the, I don't know what to call it, hyperspace dimension or another yeah. dimension, basically. And the way you access this dimension is through the use of um, psychedelics, which in some scriptures and in some ancient books, they refer to psychedelics as sorcery or something else or magic, you know, stuff like that. And that's another one oh, of the yeah. theory. And I think there's... I'm not sure if there's another theory about it, that these are just literally aliens or something from another dimension stuff. So th- those are the three main ones I've heard. Can I give you my take on it from Go personal ahead. experience? Go ahead. I'd, I'd love to hear your take. Um, so like I said, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes here. Hey, you go ahead. I don't care who but it offends. Through the exo rad lens of experience, what happened to me on DMT changed everything. Because I was diagnosed with schizo- uh, schizoaffective in 2017. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I used to be logical and atheistic. But in the journey of schizophrenia, seeing faces coming out of walls and things happening, I have to investigate it. I've always been analytical. Like, it's yeah. just part of who I am. And I find that some people don't have that in them to want to search because they're afraid. And even though I was afraid, I knew that there was something bigger happening that I couldn't put my hands on. And I think that the reason why is because I grew up Indigenous. So spirituality was always accepted as, Mm -hmm. you know, because we have stories in our culture, the Mi'kmaq culture, of things like the Skedegamwich, which is this evil witch that follows you down the road at night. And it, it appears as an entity and it's not physical and it follows you. And the only way to get rid of it is you turn around and you go, I don't need to see you right now. I want you to go away. Damn. And then it goes away. That's it. It's, <laughs> That's all, it's it all about it's all about self-control and confidence in your spirit. And not giving into fear. 
yeah, it's all about don't give in to fear or else it feeds off you, like Pennywise. Yeah. But um, we also have what's called the Bogolatomuch, which are the tiny people that live in the hillside. So they are like machine elves, okay? Because they're these little imp creatures that can be tricksters. They can be like, whoa, fun and all this stuff. Basically jesters. They're jesters. And they live just like machine elves in the hills, a.k.a. the dome space of the DMT experience. Mm -hmm. Um, You've looked that up, eh? The dome space and DMT and all that? Yeah, I've looked up the dome space. The the, the uh, Terrence McKenna kind of refers to it as a, a carnival-like setting, you know, with the well, spokes and the wheels. All around the world, there's spiritual and uh, sometimes even physical stories about the fae, fairies, and uh, spirits that live in mountains or hills. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, from my lens, the reason why is because all of these things are from hyperspace. And they're experienced in such a way that is so hyper real that even when people get out of that space, they don't understand if it's physical or spiritual. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's all coming from the universal mind or what people would call God. So with DMT, um, I had an experience two years ago in the summer where I was just like, like I was laying on my friend's bed and uh, I took 5-MEO DMT and I did probably the stupidest thing you can do, which is I just kept inhaling it until I had none left. Oh my goodness. I, I did it until I passed out. Like I, I sat there and I went, okay. Wow. You were, uh, and I told my friends to leave the room cause I don't know what was going to happen. And the best way to explain it is that everything, even the asymmetrical things we notice with our human senses looked crystallized and symmetrical. That's crazy. And then, physical reality literally ripped in front of me and I was going down a portal like a tunnel and it was like a tunnel of consciousness I guess and it was all lights and carnivalistic and all these things and the whole time I was like terrified I was internally screaming like I am dying and I ended up in this dome space and in the dome space were all these like jeweled hallucinations and like walls with eyeballs and things that were like you couldn't quite Put, like if you put it in the physical realm, everyone would lose lose their minds because there's nothing like it Definitely. in this world. And so I was in there and I was looking around and I looked over and there was this purple entity that was a lady and she came out of nowhere and she turned into a fractal of infinite stuff. Like she just kept showing me like, you know, here's a suitcase. Here's like a piece of like toilet paper or what? Like it didn't matter. It was just saying, look, I'm making all of this. And it said, you can do this too. And you're trying to evolve to become us one day. And that freaked me out because it was saying that, you know, um, spoken language is, it, it ain't shit basically. And that we still have a long way to go. And that's why we should use more visual and symbolic things. And they were telling me from all sides, draw us, draw us, draw us. Wow. And when I woke up from that experience, it changed my whole plan in life. It was no longer, oh, I'm just, you know, Chris with schizophrenia, poor me, no one understands me. It turned into like, okay, you have something to share, now go. And to this day, the hallucinations don't stop and they're more intense now. And they all relate back to that dome space experience. And, you know, I could just be crazy. That's okay. I made peace with it. But I like my life and I like what I do. And I'm not hurting myself or anybody. But that experience completely changed the game for me. Like, when they say machine elves show up and they're playful and they, they show you things, that 100% happens. And it's the most freaky experience, like nothing compares. So the, the one thing I wonder is well, what would happen if you're in this like hyperspace dimension and they're telling you all these things and what would happen if you start questioning them? They're like, are you guys are like trickster spirits? How do I know you're not trying to lie to me or, or get closer to me? You know what I mean? <laughs> I've thought about that so many times because there were times where I actually entertained the idea that they were aliens or something, some sort of spirit that tries to show you all these good things to kind of like get closer. kind of bring you in with candy. Yeah. It's like candy with a child. But the reason why I trust it so much is because no matter how many times you're in that space, 
if you're a person who is naturally like domineering mm. or aggressive or hateful, um, you will see things that look like you're in hell. It's a reflection of your inner state transfers into the DMT experience. And it does the same with LSD and mushrooms. You know, I've met people who absolutely cannot take mushrooms because they feel like they're in hell. They feel like everything is like, you know, some people don't like that. Me, there's something wrong with me, obviously, because I enjoy those experiences. And so when I was in that hyperspace experience, anytime I felt this fear or this, it was almost like the universe was putting a blanket over me and comforting me. Like I've had distrust and I've had like, entities like jesters come at me and show me like the most horrific things in different situations but at the end of the day it was always something to push me to grow and that's why I don't distrust it anymore because mm -hmm. the more that I actually kind of attuned with what they were trying to tell me the more my life kind of got better like my family relationships my self-esteem you know the way that I support myself and everything um, because what that experience was trying to tell me all along is that you are it. You are the universe. You know, love yourself and you contribute to this beautiful masterpiece that's in progress. Um, but if you're a person who's resistant and you're egotistical or egomaniacal and you're greedy or whatever, of course you're going to get tortured by the jesters. Holy shit. You're like prime bait for them. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, great. Perfect. Look at this guy. He thinks he's the shit. And then they start showing you everything. Messing like, with you and mocking you, flipping you off. That's why I trust it, because I feel like they're just an extreme echo of our human experience. And we trust vibes for a reason mm -hmm. and things that grow compared to things that decay. So I trust my inner gut feeling of like, OK, this doesn't make me feel like I want to peel my eyeballs out. So I'm going to go towards the light. And I'm not going to fall into the void pit where all the demons are getting ready to like tear me apart. So, yeah. And why I say that is because I had a moment in time where I was kind of like getting egotistical and stuff. And the jesters had a fucking field day with me. So <laughs> I'm sorry. It's uh, like, That's I know hilarious. this is candid. No, it's, I know ahead, it's candid, but like, oh my God, like it's so just... It's like the Joker. That's what makes the Joker such a perfect villain. He doesn't care about money or power like these other villains, right? All he wants is pure chaos. They just want to mess with you. He just wants to mess around and have fun and be chaotic. And that exists too. Wow. Uh, um, do you ever still question it by any chance? Or are you fully like dived into this? You're like, I fully trust what I'm uh, experiencing and the gestures. Or do you ever have that little ounce of doubt where you're like, well, I just want to keep this in the back of my mind. Or do you fully give into it? Okay, so the best way that I can explain it is I have complete faith in my hallucinations. Like, I find that the moment I start double guessing and questioning it, things start getting choppy again. I start like, you know, waking up weird hours, things hurt more, I take offense to certain things. Mm. But the more that I have faith in what I'm doing and what I feel is my life path, the more that I feel confident that everything's going to be okay. It's hard to explain because... I've been in states of hell, like I've lived through what people would probably call hell many times in my life. Like I've been in situations where there was violence and mm -hmm. abuse and people getting hurt or, you know, like that headspace is like when you're in that enough, you want to get out of it. But the thing that's so funny about the jesters is that they won't let you get out of it completely because they also remind you that you know, too much good is a bad thing too, because that's when you get like, I, I jokingly call it the camp counselor energy. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, do arts and crafts. We're going to go to the lake later. But <laughs> after a while, you're just like, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you know, just as an animal. Yeah. So it's always reminding you to balance between, you know, dark and light. Otherwise, too much darkness is pure chaos and war and all that. Too much light is just annoying and that can also lead to, you know, kind of like a fascist point of view because anybody that tries to express themselves in a dark way ends up being seen as the enemy. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get people going, I hate rap music, it's evil. Like you have to be careful for if you think you're holier than thou or whatever, like you're just too good. Because the truth is I see the universe and everyone in it as a work in progress. Like we're just a forever, you know, morphing thing and 
um, I find that once when you start to realize that, you know, you can be both, you know, a wonderful person who cares about life, but also smoke cigarettes and drink sometimes. When you combine that together, you get a healthy balance. Because what are you going to do when someone like tries to hurt hurt your family and you're too light? You don't do anything. Yeah, you or, don't protect or anything. It's so necessary because we have to remember that even though we have spiritual bodies, we're still organic matter in mm. this experience. And we kind of have to do what we have to do to fulfill what our purpose is. And when they say you decide your purpose and what you want to be, I think that's listening to an echo of something that goes beyond your ego. That's why passion is a thing. Like everything that I do in my day, like drawing the faces and stuff like that, it feels like my purpose and I don't question it. And it's gotten me 1.4 million followers on TikTok. I've done films, I've done all these things. And I do it because I want to show people that, you know, life doesn't have to be this confusing, fucked up mess where you hate yourself and it's one against the other. It's just, you are it. So live it. Mm. Because the only thing that matters is this moment. Right? So true. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is a great conversation. I'm having fun. So yeah, even too. though you think you're being annoying, you're not, man. I think this conversation is awesome. But uh, I always you love can listening. tell, eh? <laughs> yeah, I, I always love listening to people um, with different viewpoints and who are more fascinating. And I really do appreciate people who are deep thinkers. You don't find a lot of people like that anymore. You know, most people are very. They only want to discuss very trivial things. You know, hey, bro. You know, where are we gonna go eat? Hey, um, did you hear about Kanye's new album? You know, stuff like that. I think. I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that people like, and I'm not saying this in like a culty way there mm -hmm. where I'm like, yeah, people are afraid. No, no. I just mean that people are afraid. Like, yeah, I don't notice until later, but a lot of the hate comments that I get or criticisms I get are always from people who they get upset at the smallest thing. Like I say, well, you have to look at your darker self and face it in the mirror if you want to live a healthy, balanced life. And people go, no, I'm not looking in the mirror. It freaks me out. It's like this like complete denial of doing any of the work necessary yeah. to be conscious, you know? That's why uh, these types of people don't upset me anymore. You know, people who call you stupid. Or The one thing I find really interesting is called the um, the Agent Smith effect where, have you seen the, you've seen the Matrix, right? Yeah. All right. Anytime uh, during the Matrix that Neo threatens the Matrix, Agent Smith pops out of nowhere. He can turn into your friend. Uh, he can turn into your teacher. And that is what happens when you talk to your friends and family about different viewpoints that are outside of the uh, bubble. Right. What, what happens? That friend that you were talking to all of a sudden turns into Agent Smith to attack you. Right. And um, that's the one thing that I find uh, very interesting is people want to stay within their bubble and they're not willing to entertain any idea. That proves and shows right there that they're not willing to um, just go beyond that bubble, you know, and there's a lot of truth. Here's my belief. I think there's a lot of truth outside the bubble that I was put in. I think there's a lot of lies concerning history. That's why I love a lot of people that go against the grain in terms of history, archaeology, science, such as, um, you know, Jerry Marzinski, the psychotherapist. He goes against the grain. I like uh, Graham Hancock. I think you also like that guy, right? The historian that says that in our past, there were more advanced civilizations and it was more united. And there's, um, I, I love people that go against the grain because I feel like they, they just know stuff that the majority doesn't because the major, you know, individually, I, people are amazing and they have amazing thoughts. And, but as soon as people and, and beliefs, and as soon as people start grouping together, they're like a hive mind. Like if one person says anything different, they attack that person. But individually, yeah. when you talk to individuals on their own, away from their group, whatever it is, whether atheists whether they believe in new age or christianity when you talk to them individually they can like freely express what they actually believe in and i'm telling you it's so fun to talk to these types of people but as soon as they're in a group setting it's all bad <laughs> it's not you want to hear something that i'm told literally every day from the voices good oh my gosh okay <laughs> so i don't say this on tiktok because tiktok is a platform with a lot of people who you know, like, I understand that there are casual viewers, and mm -hmm. I honestly am not trying to give people existential crisis. Like, I want to push a boundary, but I don't want to be an enemy, right? I want to show people it's okay. There's a smooth way to transition. Um, but the, what the voices tell me more than anything is that there's nothing to worry about because all that hive mind stuff is going to fall apart on its own 
because eventually the veil is going to rip open whether people like it or not. And I'm doing what I do because I'm actually concerned for future people who, whenever that veil is ripped more and more, you know, the threat is, will they get violent? Mm -hmm. Will they get upset? Will they actually go what I would consider crazy? Like, like completely irrational and violent and just acting out and destroying everything. I like, to me, that's a threat and I don't like that. So I want people to know, like, voices have told me many times not to worry about it because what is going to happen is we are going to transition to a point where we literally have no choice but to meld with the metaphysical because consciousness can only develop so far to a mm. point where matter no longer matters, right? <laughs> Material no longer matters. Like we might actually get to a point where we are machine elves. We are that thing. And, you know, whether it happens or not, I, I don't know personally, but it's what the voices are saying. So a lot of my work is about how do we bridge people who are stuck in that matrix of reality and kind of bridge them to the spirituality or the metaphysical or whatever you want to call it so we can live in unison with material and spiritual because mm -hmm. everybody wants to pick a side and it's so annoying oh I, it's all material oh it's all spiritual it's like guys why not both <laughs> like take everything from everywhere and let's balance this out so we can live and move forward you know like that's the concern so yeah, that's very interesting. Another thing I want to mention concerning the Agent Smith effect is whenever I make a new video, like whatever I make, it's going to piss people off. Like, I'm surprised some of my videos piss people off. Like, I made a vid video called The Void Century. I don't know if you've seen it or seen maybe a TikTok on it. But um, I saw. yeah, in the video, I basically talk about the anime One Piece, right? And the concept of the Void Century, that there is a hundred years or more of missing history. And if you figure out what happened here, you'll figure out what happened before. And I'll get like hateful comments from people like, dude, you're such an idiot. Go read an actual history book, blah, blah, blah. When I'm just using my senses and pointing out weird inconsistencies, right? For example, yeah. there was um, a, a fire in Chicago in the 1800s because I believe the 1800s is the real void century. And uh, they say that that fire was caused when a cow knocked over a lamp and it somehow leveled the entire city of Chicago, like one or two thirds of it, right? And if you look at the pictures in the 1800s, I swear it looks like a bomb went off. Like it looks like it was bombarded or it went through war. And if you compare pictures of um, the Chicago fire to the Nagasaki fires of uh, World War II, it looks very similar, right? But of course, like the Truman Show says, we accept the reality that's presented. So of course, we'll accept something that sounds ridiculous, like, oh, you know, a cow knocking over a lamp caused all this destruction, caused stone buildings to fall apart. So when I mention these inconsistencies, people get really triggered and they like write entire paragraphs. And I just think to myself, I don't even get mad at them. I'm just thinking to myself, what is it about my video, my theory, right? That I'm entertaining because I don't fully believe it, but I'm open to it, right? Because uh, and anything concerning history is anyone's guess. Because unless you're a time traveler, then with absolute certainty, you can say to yourself, I know exactly what happened. I'm just yeah. using my senses, right? Instead of just believing somebody else's version of reality, right? Like the historians and the and school and college. I'm just looking at this from another viewpoint. Like I'm entertaining everything. Maybe the history I was taught is true. Maybe it's not. But they, they come in entire paragraphs and they're like, wow, you're such an idiot, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm like, what is it about my video that triggered you this bad that you took time out of your day to comment an entire paragraph on my video? Clearly something about my video bothered you so, so much that you had to do that. You could have just- When I see things that I don't agree with, I have better things to do with my energy than type a big paragraph about why exactly. I'm- Exactly. You know, there's you know, something about it bothers you and there might be a little bit of truth to it and that's why you don't like it. Yes. And that's what's really telling about it to me. Because, you know, people that do that to me, it's always over one word that I said, or they didn't look at the whole, like, like they'll look at one video of mine and think that I'm saying something that is not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that assumption and that pre-assumption comes from, but he's schizophrenic, so he's crazy, and he's this, so that, and blah, 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 and we can't trust that. And, the, and it's all from a point of view of if they have to think about something that is outside their comfort zone they you know i think it has to do with also nobody wants to be betrayed yeah they don't want to be betrayed by their government or history books course, or, nobody wants to be lied but to. Yeah. we've seen it so many times that history is written by the victor some things are completely Amen. you know rewritten i'm indigenous 
I wasn't even taught about my own people in school because they were trying to erase our whole thing from history. So I don't exactly trust books because, and I, I say this with respect to historians because I think history is fascinating. But from my point of view as a schizophrenic artist, I could give less of a shit. I mean, a bumblebee passed me yesterday. Cool, what's here today? You know, like to me, like what matters the most is living now and doing things now. Because history is destined to repeat itself. It's this, it's like time. Nothing it new under the sun. It just does what it does. Nothing yeah. new under the sun. I'm not new under the sun, most definitely. I mean, like DMT has been around forever. And mm -hmm. so has, you know, what they call schizophrenia. And so like, you know, I'm just the version of that that lives in 2022 as yeah. Christopher Grant. So, but um, one one last thing I wanted to mention was, did you ever look up the uh, the whole burning bush vision? Uh, theory it, is is that the, the the Moses theory right where it was apparently DMT instead of a, it was in, in uh, I think an Arca Arcadia tree a DMT plant right is that what they were saying yeah and, and it's because the tree that they mention in the burning bush whenever you research that tree it has natural dimethyltryptamine in it Th and they think everything... that well yeah to a degree but uh -huh. I guess. <laughs> Whenever they burnt the bush, apparently, you know, he started getting visions of angels and faces and voices talking That's to him. Telling, and, you know, I always think about that because, you know, um, I really believe that DMT is a way for neurotypical people, as we call it, to experience what it's like to live in a brain of a schizophrenic person. Because I don't live in the dome space, right? Like, I still see, like, my computer, you, mm -hmm. but there's like a blanket on top of my brain that's always like Ugh, it's, it's, it's like it's like a thin veil right you can see stuff but you're still in reality like or yeah. what we call reality my wall like this whole time talking to you my wall has been breathing okay so just... and yeah and the uh, light around my camera that i'm using has been glowing like ooh, and then going uh dang but that's normal to me because i've been used to it for like five or six years now um, you know, so I just find it really fascinating, like when people take like LSD or mushrooms or DMT, they comment on my videos, I saw the faces and the I go, the jester, right? Well, the jester same. and the faces I draw, people always tell me they've seen it and I don't comment cause I'm not trying to, you know, get myself banned there, but I get, I get this like feeling of like, I know you did. I know exactly what you're talking about. The way I draw it is my version, but it's been done in many different renditions, many different ways from many different cultures, yep. nothing new under the sun. So it's just always really nice to hear that people have seen something, you That's know. That's really fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I look at people who just comment hateful things is I kind of look at him like, um, you know, in the story of Jesus where, um, you know, he, he looks up to God or to the heavens and he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right. So when I look at somebody else, I just like, you, you know, you're not, you don't understand what I'm seeing or what I'm understanding. So I, I, I can't blame you for not being able to understand. What I do blame you for is not letting go of pride or at least not emptying the cup and coming into a topic with a, a clean slate mindset, right? To understand yeah. somebody, which is why, like I said, when I started this interview with you, my mind is clear. Like I'm just listening to you as if I've never learned anything about schizophrenia. I don't know anything about any religious belief, and I believe everything is religious, including atheism. That is for sure yeah. a faith-based belief, right? Even evolution and the Big Bang, they're still called theories for a reason, right? They're not yeah. observable, testable. If, if something is observable, testable, and provable, then it's not really faith. You can see it. But yeah. if something isn't, then, then it's faith-based. And a lot of people, because of pride in, in the atheistic world, they don't want to admit, like, well, my belief is faith. There are some people that are humble enough to be agnostic, and they're like, Okay, yeah, my belief is faith based. I, I, you know, I'm open to whatever, but I, I don't understand prideful people. They're just hurting themselves. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's so funny because you think it would just be atheists only, like traditionally, you're like, oh, it's just the atheists. It's everybody for sure. I've met people with schizophrenia who are so damn afraid of their shadow that when I speak about what my experiences are, they try to shut me down. Like there's been whole Reddit threads like shitting all over me because because of my how I express myself. And I find it so interesting because it's like they're not even taking the time of day to analyze, understand. Like if you really want to critique something, look at my other videos, 
try to get the gist of what I'm saying and understand that you can't explain your whole point of view in a minute or three minutes. Yeah, like, don't answer a matter until you hear it, right? Yeah, oh, and wow. so I find it, but I find it sad because I see these people as like, they're schizophrenic people who I, I understand they're afraid and they feel like freaks in society. So it must be annoying to see someone with it who's just like, normal. <laughs> I have it. Um, but, you know, cause I've been that person. I've been that like, I'm afraid. I don't want, I don't want to hear anything. So because I've been that person, it does break my heart more to see that people are so quick to dismiss something that from my own experience actually gave me more life. Mm -hmm. It gave me more of a, like a drive to grow and to be, you know, and I, what humbled me the most was my darkest nights, right? Like the nights where you feel like something's gnawing at your chest because anxiety happens to everybody, but when it's schizophrenia, like it feels worse. like you're being attacked by demons for real. Like I'll lay up a, at night and I'll have to shut off like, like a TV show I'm watching because it feels like it's attacking me. Yeah. Like just things like that. And I know that it's freaky to some people, but at the same time, if you don't go through it, if you don't go through what, you know, the cards that you're dealt, you're going to suffer way more. Right. That, that's what I heard a lot about these entities is that they can be like spiritual parasites and obviously like real parasites, right? If you're sick, if you're not taking care of yourself, eating right, um, you, you become a great host for parasites. And just like mm -hmm. if you give into fear and anxiety, uh, you also become a great, even, even that um, um, you become a good host, even that guy, Jerry Marzinski, right? The psychotherapist, he even stated that the, these entities are, are spiritual, like spiritual parasites and they want to they're the best host is the ones with the, the the worst kind of spiritual health i guess you can say and yeah. uh yeah it's i find that very and interesting yeah. it's not just schizophrenic people i've met people who pass as neurotypical who i like i look at them and the only way i can explain it in language is i'm like damn you got something like sucking on your leg there dude like that, yeah that happened to know? me before because uh when i started to get depersonalization and derealization i just got it from questioning things and i also had an ego death but it wasn't from any taking any kind of substances. It was just me questioning stuff, right? Moment so, of clarity, eh? Yeah, just yeah. Just like the, a, oh shit. Like, yeah, it, literally. Exactly. That's why I relate to the Truman Show so much. If you look at my videos, I've mentioned Truman Show like I can't even count how many times I mentioned it, but uh, very often uh, because I relate to that movie a lot. And yeah, I just had a moment of clarity, and I'm like, wow, like history is a lie, science is a lie. There's so many lies out there, and I I, I developed uh, an ego death where I completely got disconnected to the point of developing derealization and depersonalization and not even knowing what I was experiencing because I didn't I didn't go to the doctor. I haven't been to doctors in like 10 years. So it's been yeah. a while. Um and I'm proud of that because I don't I don't like hospitals. Hospitals are a very negative place. And they but get your checkup for your physical health you. Oh for sure. I want I want to test my blood and I'm kind of interested. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of yourself. Hundred percent. And uh yeah I found it very interesting. Um my kind of personal view on ego death, I believe having too much of an ego is absolutely bad but having yeah. no ego can be you know just as bad and i feel like oh yeah i think of it like a goldilocks kind of thing right not too hot not too cold yeah just dry because uh, you should have a little bit of an ego but control it so because I, my ego gives me a, some sense of identity right my name is vitaly and i'm sitting here i'm a conscious being i'm my own entity right and i'm talking to christopher who's also his yeah. own being and he has his own ideas and his own beliefs and his own personality ego helps you with the passing moments yeah. and keeping a stability in present consciousness because the whole point of having an ego and the fact that we develop to have senses that are physical and an ego and persona to guide is us because in the physical. It, it matches our purpose mm -hmm. what we're here to do what we like to do like i believe in a soul because i really think that you know like just like the entities or the faces and voices they're no different for me or you it's just they don't have a physical vessel in this plane right now. Mm -hmm. And so I've always seen them as like they're probably dead or they're, you know, not born yet. But whatever energy that is, it's everywhere. It's in the trees. It's in the rain. It's in the water. In the, like, and so whenever I uh, like see the faces and the voices, um, I don't look at it as this like freaky other thing that's separate from me that's trying to destroy me or whatever. I see it as, oh, it's me but it's not Christopher, but it's, it's like when you look like an animal in the eyes and you're like, 
I understand you. I see you. I see you're a conscious being. You're, <laughs> you're lo- like, I look at my cat all the time in the eyes and I'm like, I know it's hard, eh? Like, I swear you can talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I sit there, like, like in the summer, what I do is, like, I'll pick up, like, caterpillars and spiders and moths, and I look at them, and I'm just like, look at you, little unit of consciousness exploring 3D space, just like me. You know, like, <laughs> that's how I think about life. And, you know, the same goes for, like, voices and faces, but I notice that people with schizophrenia or without schizophrenia who see it as evil... Mm-hmm. great job you're attracting the evil good good on you because you're literally creating what's coming to you like when i focused on like oh i hate myself and i hate society uh, i got all that shit like in front of me you know i'm seeing like like things that look like freaking skinwalkers in the rake every five oh seconds goodness. yes That's i'd be horrifying. in the woods at night and something would come out and go and i'm just like hell no <laughs> and i'm like it's me it's me it's me manifesting this by believing in the fear but whenever i sit back calm down meditate like just like draw or express it all balances back out so i really think that we do create our reality right so that's fascinating hey man thank you so much for joining me on this conversation i really appreciate you yeah. giving your time I, this was very fun for this me, was I don't know fun. if it was. I'm glad you uh, you can express yourself more on here because TikTok is such a short platform to be able to make videos, and I think this was oh, yeah. a great opportunity, maybe even for your own followers to understand you better. Uh, this was really well, fun. it's definitely the rabbit hole if they want to go down the rabbit hole because fun I t- I'm talking more freely here than I ever would on TikTok because there it's just people with memes and stuff. And yeah, t- TikTok. What, what I realized it's for people with short attention spins. Like I made yeah. a I made a video on the apparent real name of the devil according to you know scriptures and many other books taken out and one guy commented he's like can you just get to the point can you just say his name already i'm like it's just a three minute (laughs) video i can't just say his name i need to explain and then i'll say it on i need to explain why and then i say it at the end and they're like no bro get to the point i'm like man your attention spans are this that's why youtube is a better platform because people actually watch you know longer podcasts longer videos, and they're more invested that's also i think why youtube pays people more uh, unlike I think TikTok yeah. pays like four cents per thousand, right? Something small. Honestly, <laughs> I don't even get I don't even get money from TikTok because money the motive for me, you know. Yeah, for like, me either. Like whether I'm getting paid or not, like I'm gonna like. Uh, we have the saying in Migma, which is "Creator will take care of you if you have faith in it." And my whole family follows that, and I can't explain it. It's really uncanny. But even when we're like short on money or something's just a little tough. Always at the last minute, something comes around and keeps us afloat. And it was a teaching my grandfather passed down. And it's basically just, you don't have to believe in something so intensely that you're, you know, scra- like scribbling on the walls and you're going mad there. Yeah. But you just have to really trust yourself and creation itself. And it will take care of you. Like, but if you're greedy and you're a person who like, I want this, 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 and that, it, it won't happen. Like you, it's all about just appreciate the moment, appreciate your family around you, and it takes care of you. You know. So yeah, I, I really like that Mi'kmaq quote that you know, if you got faith in the Creator or or whatever Creator you guys believe in or your family believes in, that um, if you have faith, you know, everything will work out for the best. And that's kind of yeah. what, what even even the Scripture says that too that. That the creator, you know, he feeds the birds, he gives the animals what they need. So yep. how do you know, and you're like, you know, you're 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 a conscious human being. You think he doesn't care about you just as enough, you know? And I'm like, yeah, it's true. He feeds the animals, he gives them what they need, and he's also gonna give you what you need if you have faith and not give into all this yeah. fear society. If you just from my own experience, if you do have a faith in anything, creation, God, whatever it is whatever you see God as or creation or the source, if you have faith in it, you start to notice things start to attract your way. Like there are times where like I'm low on money and I'm like hungry. And then like a sibling comes by, has enough food to give to me, goes away. Oh, I'm out of gas in this car. Someone comes around. There's gas now. Like it's always finding a way to get you to your next point. But when you resist it, and you go, well, I want to control everything and I want to do this at this hour. I deserve this, this and that, yeah. Then it ends up like it's I always call it spiritual constipation. Like it just it <laughs> stops it. It's like it's like look it's like creation's looking at you and going, 
dude, I'm like laying out everything for you. What the hell are you complaining about? Like, so. That's, that's kind of, I also view like prayer like that. Like often in, you know, in the Christian community, they kind of see prayer as like something magical, right? That like, like, like God is like Santa Claus. But the way I see it is um, the, the creator, what I believe in the creator works halfway. So he yeah. opens doors and opportunity. I can't pray for a good wife to come into my life and sit on my ass yeah. in my room, right? I got I to gotta pray. I got to get up and actually take doors because I believe, you know, he provides opportunities and doorways. To, you just have to walk through, you know? Prayer and action. Prayer People and action. don't do the action. No, that's, it's, all, that's, it's all magic for them, right? <laughs> look, even when I'm having a bad day or I'm stressed out or whatever, I still every day have a goal to at least post something, draw yeah. something because mm-hmm. I have faith that even when it's not, you know, even whenever I'm not getting a million views on a video, it's not about that. It's about the journey. 100%. And and the journey has to be enjoyed or else you get to a certain place and you just hate everything. You're just like yeah. empty. And- That's why for me, the, the one of the motives was for making my videos. And I, I also make content every day. If you look at my content, I at least post something every day, whether it's yeah, a know. short TikTok or whether it's a longer video on YouTube, at least longer videos. I try to post maybe two or one. Uh, every week but uh the reason is is because it helps with my depersonalization and derealization because i used to feel like i'm in a it's like the movie groundhog day i wake up it's the same day and everything is just in a cycle and i really hate it so now that i started making more videos it was kind of my like kind of like escape where i feel like every day is a new adventure right and that's why i I like pushing people's buttons i kind of enjoy i like putting out controversial things (laughs) questioning everything and like i'll post i posted a, a tiktok a year ago on giant trees right the conspiracy that Back in our day, the plane, in our plane that we live in, there used to be these giant trees and giant animals and our life was totally different. And people got all offended. And, and like, I see biologists and uh, geologists commenting, oh, you're such an idiot, bro. Obviously, this is all wrong. And I'm like, look, I'm just entertaining theories. I'm just having fun. Like, why do you guys have to get so offended? <laughs> it's funny. You know, that's actually aligned with the whole spirit of the jester. Because you know it'll push people's buttons, but it's also giving you a call to action. Mm-hmm. I know that what I do is going to push some buttons, but at the end of the day, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, okay. (laughs) Because it really doesn't matter, you know? And not in a depressing nihilistic way. I just mean, like, no matter what anybody throws at you or what they say to you, if your foundation is solid and you experience your life in your way and you create and express yourself, then what other people say is just, it's, to me, it's no different than like, you know, like, why am I any better than an animal where a predator is looking at you trying to sum up if you're its next meal? It's not about that. You can't stop that from happening. So just be the best that, you know, you can yeah, be. Pe- people take things way too seriously. I'm like, none of us are making it out of this life alive. <laughs> so, you know, I don't get why people want to hold on to their, to their false concepts of reality. And, uh, but yeah, man, well, you know, th- uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that it still baffles me that people are afraid of death. Like, it's not baffling. Like, I don't want to die right now. Like, I kind of like this experience. Yeah. But, you know, I I feel personally that I've been through so much that if I just died, it's not really a big deal. You accept as your long as, as long as I'm expressing myself every day and doing what I love, there's nothing to fear. But if I'm stagnant and not doing what I love, of course, there's many reasons to fear death. I'm not living. So. 100%. But yeah, listen, thank you so much for, oh, wow, that's interesting. Wow. Did you just <laughs> met that today? Yeah, I did a time oh, wow. lapse for TikTok earlier. Look at them all at the top. That's interesting. Do you also see them in like black and white and like checkered patterns? Oh, hell no. This is just an art style. Wow, that's very interesting. A lot of people ask that. They're, they're like plasma. You know, whenever you see like a smokestack, and it's like distorting the air. Yeah. Like that. I've seen that in a dream before where I was being attacked, actually. Really? So, okay. In, in this dream, I'll, I'll just briefly say it. I was in an empty room, kind of dark, but it was light enough that I can see everything. And the only thing that was in the room was me, a fat ass mirror. And uh, <laughs> I had some kind of object in my hand. I don't remember what it was. Let's just say it was a cube. And I was just standing in front of the mirror and I was just throwing it up in the air, just messing around with it. I throw it up in the air, then all of a sudden the object stops and it's floating. And I look at it and I'm like, all right, what the hell? And uh, I look in the mirror and I see a reflection of what you're talking about, this like smoky, yeah. shadowy spirit coming towards me. And I turned around and my instinct, I, I don't know why I, I yelled this out, but I'm like, I have no other choice. I don't know what to do. 
So I just yell out, uh, and Yahshua's name depart from me, which is Jesus's name in Hebrew. And as, as the spirit was getting close to me, it just disappeared. And I wake up and I'm like, okay, what, what was that? That was yeah. weird. Yeah, mirrors are just weird in general. I don't like staring in the mirrors too long. Really? Mirrors are freaking weird, man. Like, you know, it's the stories of like black mirrors, um, you know, in ancient cultures. They're also known as like portals to uh, other worlds, I believe, back in the day by some cultures, wow. like Aztecs. <laughs> That's so funny because I look in mirrors all the time and how it goes for me is I'm looking in the mirror and I go, I see you. I know you're looking at me. <laughs> I know what you are. You are me. I am you. Hello. Like, it doesn't freak me out, but. Just know, mir but mirrors in general are so interesting. I'm like looking at them like, how, how, it's kind of like trying to figure out how does the internet work? How do we make the internet from sticks and, and, and rocks, you know? Yeah. And that's the way I view mirrors. I'm like, how does, how does this, I know there, there's a science to it and it explains it, but I'm still like, how does that, how do, how's there a reflection right there? It's like looking into another world. Yeah. It's, it's just so cool. It's really cool. But yeah, man, so cool. hey, thank you so much for coming on here. Um, The last thing I want to do is I want to ask a few questions, a few common misconceptions. I want you to answer them and tell me, is it true or not? So uh, let me get my phone real quick. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I guess these are common questions and misconceptions that people have about uh, what we medically know as a schizophrenia. So let's answer them. Let me see. You know, the funny thing about medical um, kind of like descriptions mm -hmm. is I don't see it as any different from when you open a textbook and there's a stale diagram of like, this is a tree. This is how a seagull works. It's honest. like you're giving a framework, but you're not showing the, the experience. So there's something missing, you know? Yeah. All right, first question I have for you. Individuals with schizophrenia can't hold down a job, true or false? False. And actually, of course, you're an animator, right? Actually, it depends on who you are. I mean, it goes for anybody. You don't have to be schizophrenic. I mean, you know, if anything, holding down a job is only harder because, you know, in the Western world, if you are open about hearing things and seeing things, you're ostracized yeah you're so not it's not really the fault of the schizophrenic in my point of view it's more in the in the court of what supply and demand expects of its workers yeah so yeah but so, uh, i hold down a job i'm a filmmaker and an animator which works great I, actually i well, thank you i i i make uh my money from doing art like art grants but i also know other people with schizophrenia who are like good parents lawyers I know one, doctors yeah lawyers doctors nurses everything like things that they obviously can't say it to their clients or other people because of the stigma yeah. but it's out there you know all right second question schizophrenia is caused by bad parenting true or false who the hell wrote that i don't know but th this is a common <laughs> common idea sometimes is that parents abuse their kids and then develop schizophrenia from trauma all right well okay i mean these questions are so interesting because that can apply to anybody like it, can, it doesn't yeah. have to lead to schizophrenia. Bad parenting creates shitty situations. Like yeah, it's poor self-esteem and stuff. Poor self-esteem and self-image and like trying to fulfill yourself. Um, but in the case of schizophrenia, though, um, you know, bad parenting. The best way that I can say is that, you know, as long as you love your child and you don't like stigmatize them or make them feel like shit mm -hmm. going through what they're going through, they should be fine. Um, you know, like I was lucky that when I was a child, I had good parents, um, but it ended up being kind of dicey because my dad kind of like, uh, kind of went a whole different route there. But even to this day, he doesn't stigmatize me, you know, like my mom is very accepting and that really, uh, helps with my day to day, like, you know, self-esteem, mental that's health. Good. It's, it's always good to have a family that's supportive because well, if they're not supportive, it's pure hell, you know? Yeah, but bad parenting period causing schizophrenia. Like, <laughs> that's a toddler question. Right? Yeah, that's not mine. This is like on some medical page. Uh, yeah. And the, the third question is schizoph... Uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Schizophrenia. Where is it? Oh, schizophrenia causes sudden mood swings all the time. Okay, it depends on what kind of schizophrenia you have because what people don't understand is schizophrenia is an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. You can be schizophrenic, but you're diagnosed schizoaffective. Mm -hmm. You can be schizotypal. You can have residual schizophrenia, paranoid schizophrenia, schizophreniform. Like the list goes on. It's a spectrum. Yeah. So well, for me, 
moody because I have the bipolar side. That's why I have like kind of a, like if you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit like, Ugh, sometimes. It's because I have a natural like um, wiggliness to me. And sometimes that turns into a low. Like there are times you talk to me and I'm just, and that's because of the bipolar part. Um, but causing like mood issues with everyone with schizophrenia, it's it's not everybody. I've met people with schizophrenia who are completely stone faced all the time, <laughs> right? Like I've met people with it who don't even have like mood swings or anything. They just you know. Awesome. So. I know I said that was the last question, but I actually have one last one. Uh, okay. Schizophrenia impacts intelligence, true or false? I think we both know the answer. Yes. <laughs> well impacts intelligence in well in way? a negative way that's what i mean sorry schizophrenia oh. impacts intelligence in a negative way well here's the thing okay <sighs> people don't seem to realize this but the, the difference between the word smart and intelligent is that a smart person is practical mm. they're good with like you know analytics you know, building, building yeah. things working with material life puzzles. you know doing puzzles day-to-day -day jobs and stuff an intelligent person thinks outside of the immediate concepts of like culture and reality. They're more creative, so yeah. They're more creative and they're more open-minded to possibilities beyond what is presented to them. Yeah. And so you will notice a lot of people with schizophrenia, similar to autism, have an intelligence towards something like a hyperfixation. Um, I've met people with schizophrenia, for some reason with schizophrenia, it's always an obsession with reality, right? That's just the way that it works. Um, and I find that schizophrenia actually made me more compassionate and more uh, open-minded because I had to face something that was against my control. Yeah. And even and when I took belief too. Well, yeah, because when I took antipsychotic medication, it helps some people if they want to live a life that's practical, where they go to work and have their coffee and do their thing. Antipsychotics are great for that, but that's not everybody on earth. I was born in an artistic family, indigenous community. Uh, we live in a West, but we're not Westernized. Mm -hmm. We have a whole other way of living. And so um, giving me antipsychotic medication, it blocks me from being who I am or who I recognize Christopher as. So I don't want to take it and it's completely up to me. But it made me feel more connected and it actually gave me a belief in something beyond just my immediate experiences and yeah you know i don't see what the problem is with that as long as i'm not starting a cult or hurting people so <laughs> yeah you know what's you really know. interesting about um uh, autism is i find people who have autism very interesting especially people with asperger's did you know yeah. um the singer the musician owl city he actually has asperger's like he has autism. really he's autistic yeah wow that's what makes them so creative. I mean, you can kind of tell, uh, like uh, people with Asperger's, they're more like socially awkward, but they're so intelligent. And yeah. that's what makes them such an interesting, uh, fascinating musician and why he's kind of unique. I, I follow him on Instagram and he would sometimes just post like random stuff. Like you take a picture of a mushroom. He's like, oh, look at this cool mushroom in my backyard. You know, just very, they're mm -hmm. very interesting, fascinating people. They're very intelligent. It's just like socially, they, they can't be around people. But the one mm -hmm. thing I really do find interesting is uh, some people are scared to, I guess, um, dive deeper into their talents, whether it's music, you know, because they're scared of being judged, right? Whether it's art or music or um, podcasting or whatever, um, they're scared to dive into that kind of stuff because they're scared of what the outside world thinks. But people with autism, they uh, they don't care about that stuff, right? They're, they're socially awkward. They don't care about who says what. So they dive deep into their passions and art and they don't care who, you know, who thinks what. And I find that really interesting. You know what? Honestly, all my homies are autistic or they're neurodivergent. And the reason why is because I notice they don't judge me for my point of view. They're interesting. Like, they're, they're, they're sweet. They people, ask me, they'll ask me questions about why I believe what I believe in what I've seen. And it's never met with, Oh, you're just making it up. It's a oh, stupid. You're, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah. No, they just go, but why do you think that? Why are you talking about like, why is this grip you so much? And I'm, and they let me explain. And then at the end of the conversation, they go, that's really cool. I didn't think about life like that. But I talked to someone who is neurotypical and it's immediately like, uh, this is awkward. Like, why are you talking weird. about creation? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I just, and it makes me feel alienated. So I actually think I don't see autistic people as socially awkward from my point of view. 
I see them as honest people. And I like that because I feel like they're not messing with me. I, like, I also, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, like, that's why I get along with people with autism very well is because I like how sincere they are naturally and how, you know, if I upset them, I know I upset them. It's not like this. Well, I don't know. Uh, God, <laughs> talk to me later. I can't handle that. To me, that's like a circuit. Like, that's awkward to me. Like any scene where there's a club or a party or people just being oh, so normal boring. people is a <laughs> nightmare. So and I, I look awkward to normal people, but I'm really social. I love talking. I love oh. expressing. But put me in a crowd of people who don't like I, to. I want to leave. <laughs> I, I want to leave and they look at me like I'm I had someone at a party once tell me like why are you so far out and I said I like being far out and they went yeah well I like being far in and then they just like walked away and I was like <laughs> was that an insult like what are you doing I, I don't know man uh, to me like these type of people they sometimes feel like um, uh, NPC just like background characters in a sims game like I'm trying to I have one deeper... mean, but it's so true <laughs> I, I don't either you know I don't want to put myself on a pedestal it's just that I really hate dumbing myself down and I'm not saying like I'm a super genius person I just like diving into like deeper topics and when I mention some of these topics that I mentioned to you people look at me uh, most people I would say with the fluoride stare you know they're like what are you talking about anyway let's go get back to Kanye and his new album <laughs> you know like yeah and you know what sucks about it is i want to talk about kanye and his new album i love yeah. music i like, also like to dumb myself down sometimes you know i don't mind it but not all the time i don't like it all the time here, here's the thing is that it looks like dumbing down whenever you're constantly thinking about all these different things at once but there is a genius in the everyday thing it's part of what keeps together like the reality that we all share so i do see them as like important and you know, they're part of the fabric of reality. So I don't want to be like, you know, hateful or put myself yeah. on a pedestal. But from personal experience, like I hate going out in public Same. because I feel like if I say something just a little too real that there's going to be a witch hunt, like <laughs> that just might be my own paranoia because I still do struggle with paranoia. I'm not mm -hmm. perfect. It's just it's you put me in a coffee shop and it's like a nightmare sometimes oh, because man. I can't tune out everybody talking and the voices commenting on what people are saying and it's like i don't want to be judgmental but it's like i hear certain things that people say and it dry, it makes my face red and i leave and i'm like what am i what what is this like yeah it's so a, it's funny because like i i'm naturally i'm born as like just an extroverted person even as a baby my, my parents would tell me you just go up to strangers and say hi which is a little bit dangerous you know as a kid yeah going up to strangers, i would be all like you know playful and happy and uh now as i started to go through my like um you know questioning phase i mean I, I call it the truman phase where i was just questioning things i i became a lot more introverted and i'm still extrovert i love talking to people but I choose yeah. who I want to be extroverted with, you know. I also talk to people who are, I consider like the, uh, you know, I guess the NPC type where they don't really want to talk about anything deeper. And I don't mind talking to them, you know. I also it's enjoy. It's refreshing when you meet the right person. Yeah, it's really refreshing. it's like you're just coasting along and existing. And yeah, so for me, it's like a, I also enjoy my cheap entertainment. You know, I'm not all about like, oh, I just want to know the inconvenient truth the whole time. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it, get, it gets a, a very um annoying and kind of kind of hard to always just look look at the inconvenient truth so I, I like my cheap entertainment too you know but not too much it's like fast food do you ever have those moments like i get these moments all the time where i'm so in my own realm of researching and looking at things that it's like my whole body gets hot and it's like okay i gotta step away for a second because this yeah, is yeah, too yeah. intense it's like uh, it's like too much for me sometimes and i'm like i, I want to relax a little bit you know i can't be looking into this all the time and there's 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 days to look into this there's days to just relax and enjoy your cheaper entertainment you know it's like if you eat fast food all the time it's bad for you if you don't enjoy yourself a little bit every now and then it's also bad for you because you're always so strict and also upset sometimes but um, you also it's see like the, diet you also see the genius in everyday things because i used to shut myself off to things like the show the office or brooklyn 99 or things that were that I used to call very hatefully basic. Like I used to be really anti like people there. Yeah. But when I opened my mind to it more, I realized that there's genius in everyday things, especially even shows that I never would have watched before. Cause I like when I want to detune from all of this stuff and I just want to exist, 
I'll put on like The Office and I'll binge watch it. And I'm entertained because the way that I see life is it's a puppet show and there's all these archetypes and characters that are interacting with each other. And so it's kind of refreshing to come back from the perception that's like kind of an exploded view of everything and then look at how it it kind of manifests in like a TV show or a movie and to see those things being explored in a way that's digestible sometimes is so refreshing. It really it's, is, yeah. Yeah. So. That, that's kind of how I view a diet. You know, if you just strictly die and strictly eat clean all the time, um, you're not, life is not always going to be enjoyable. But when you no. like eat, you know, your favorite fast foods every now and then, right? You, uh, you, it's kind of like that um, uh, delayed gratification. Delayed gratification feels amazing, right? When you're yeah. eating fast food every day, you're kind of used to it and it starts getting kind of disgusting. And you're like, okay, it has no know. taste after a while. It's no like taste. Yeah. It's that. like all this sugar. You're like, okay, I don't enjoy this anymore. But when you delay your gratification and you get your stuff done, you take care of yourself, you know, you, you eat right. And then you're like, you know, what? I deserve a little cheat meal. And then you're like, wow, this cheat meal tastes so much better than if I were to eat this every day. And that's yeah. how I kind of see it too, with in terms of, um, you know, the inconvenient truths is, uh, I can't just only look at the inconvenient truths every single day. I want to enjoy myself. Sometimes I want to turn on, you know, stranger things and eat some good yeah. every now and then, you know? Well, the truth too, I think that is important is it, it all goes back to like, you know, what voices tell me about balance. Like I'm sure you saw it on my TikToks. I'm always talking about balancing the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. It's so important because if I'm only watching the office and Brooklyn nine, nine and stuff, my brain feels like mush. Yeah. If I'm always researching machine elves and voices and faces and archetypes and things, my brain is mush. So if I have a healthy balance of, okay, this morning, I'm going to go to the walking track and exercise. I'm going to see people that are just day-to-day -day people. And I'm going to hold doors open for people and say hello and just be a part of life. Then I'll go home and I'll draw a piece of artwork that expresses all that stuff. And then I'll go to sleep watching Adventure Time. Like, it's the perfect balance. Like... If you don't do that, it's so easy to, because I've been on both sides. I've been the person that's only like completely focused on like, entertainment. like stuff that Cheap entertainment pleasure. and distraction. Yep. And I've been the person who is literally like, there's a room over there in my house that is mad scroll. It's just says XO rad everywhere and there's spaces. And I've been in that. Wow. <laughs> and so to be able to, you know, kind of condense myself and focus mm -hmm. is the best gift that. I think any human can give themselves like 100%. any person like any like i don't know how, how to explain you just gotta it. have it's a balance good. you know everything in moderation you don't have to be super strict with yourself and you don't have to be a complete you know idiot who only wants cheap pleasures right both sides yeah. are bad it's like that like again the goldilocks thing not too hot not too cold just be just right you know yeah but that's the way i see it i approach everything like that i mean like you, have you know i'm not i'm not perfect you know like i uh you know, I sometimes say things that are hurtful to family and don't realize it, you know, like I'm human. Yeah. So, you know, I have my mistakes and my, you know, like sometimes I eat too much bad food. Like I don't take care of my body, drink enough water, but I don't condemn myself because I know that it's okay to have some dark with the light as mm -hmm. long as I'm balancing it. Right. So. And as long yeah. as you're working on yourself, you know, we all make mistakes. It's like that one saying that, you know, we all have our own sins to deal with. But as long as you're working on yourself, you recognize your wrongs. Because most people, I would say, don't recognize what they're doing wrong. And they think everything they're doing is right. And that's why they hurt themselves, right? And uh, so, yeah, that's how I view it, too. Just the whole Goldilocks thing. Just have everything just right, you know? You don't have to be perfect. No human is perfect. But work on yourself. It's like, I, think yeah. I feel like your soul and your, you know, it's like it's like a muscle. Yeah, As long as you work on it, it gets better and better and better. You might stumble, but get back on that horse and continue. And you know what? The cosmic jesters are always sticking out their tongue at you because <laughs> no matter what you do, if you want to sit still or run, if you don't balance it, they'll laugh at you this way. They'll laugh at you that way until Make you get it right. Yeah. That's my point of view. So, Man, this conversation was absolutely awesome. It was fascinating. Thank you again so much for your time. I know you don't have to do this, but the fact that you took time out of your day, I appreciate that because time is more valuable than money. And I think you yeah. spent a good, what is it? It's been two hours now, almost two hours, I think. But this yeah, is an was, awesome conversation. I enjoyed this, and um, I hope both of our audi audiences enjoy it as well and give their thoughts and opinions. But thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to pause it.